Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to take a look at one of those itches that you've got, and you just kind of have to scratch it. I've got this project. It's kind of been gnawing a hole in the back of my mind, and we're going to dive into it today. So if you're curious about that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so a little bit of background about this project. Uh, there's really two main ways that you can bias the power tubes in a guitar amplifier that is commonly used. One way would be fixed bias. That would involve grounding the cathodes directly, and then you insert a negative DC voltage to the grid that helps you bias your tube. Then the second way is using cathode bias, where you basically use a resistor on the cathode that helps regulate current flow that way. Uh, most of your Fender or Marshall amps will use the fixed bias, and then most of maybe your Vox style amps or your, your tweed fenders will use cathode bias. Both methods have their pros and cons. Um, and, and are used widely and are, and are very good ways of biasing an amp. Now, um, sideways, let's also jump to uh, another project I recently did, which was my 6AU6 Princeton Rebuild. That amp was using fixed bias, and I had some 1 ohm resistors. I know I just said that in fixed bias, the cathode gets grounded directly, but you can actually insert a two 1 ohm resistors on both of the cathodes to ground on those power tubes. Then the beauty of using the 1 ohm resistor is that when you use Ohm's law to find current, current equals voltage divided by resistance. Well, when your resistance is 1 ohm, then whatever your voltage is, is the current in the tube. So it's just a very handy and convenient way of getting an accurate current measurement. Well, in the 6AU6 amp, I ended up blowing up those 1 ohm resistors. And I couldn't figure out what was going on, why the amp wasn't passing any signal to the output tubes. Well, it's because I had no path to ground because I blew up those cathode resistors. I was confused by that, not really sure what was going on there. Um, but what is kind of stuck in the back of my mind is once I fixed that problem, I just grounded them directly, took those res resistors out entirely, didn't have the problem anymore. But on the flip side, I've got two other amps, my Plexi and my Trainwreck Express clone, that both are pretty powerful amps with big output sections, and they also um, use those 1 ohm resistors on the cathodes. So I just had this kind of ongoing uncertainty. Now those amps have never ceased to function and I have no reason to think that they're wrong, but just kind of as I've been an itch I can't help but scratch. So in today's video I recorded a clip with the amp as it is, including the 1 ohm resistors, and then I take them out. Count, ground those cathodes directly with a nice chunky wire and play again and, and we'll see if we can hear any difference. I'm super curious about this. Let's go ahead and hear the clips now.
Okay, I hope you found those clips interesting. Um, when I listen back to it, I do not hear any change in tone. So I don't actually think that those 1 ohm resistors were doing anything problematical in the train wreck. However, I did a little bit of internet research on this, and I found some interesting stuff here on EL34 World. One of the recommendations would be that um, you know the current's not that big, so 1 watt or lower should be enough. But if something were to go wrong with the power tubes, the cathode would get all that current flowing through it, and the resistor would blow. So this person recommended a 5 watt resistor. But then the next person chimed in and said, well, actually, those half-watt resistors in, a, in a normal operating conditions should be enough. But then you can actually almost use them like a fuse. Something, something goes wrong, those half-watt resistors will blow before the output tube or before the transformer does. So it's kind of an interesting, almost like a backup fuse. And I wonder if that's what was happening in my 6AU6 amp because of problems maybe elsewhere or other things that were going on with the amp. Those half-watt resistors blew like a fuse. And, and actually we'll be fine. But just to kind of get a feel for what would be enough, you know, if our cathode current is, let's say, 50 milliamps, which actually would be very high. It's not uncommon that I would bias mine somewhere between the range of 15 to 30 or 40, depending if it's 6V6s or EL34s or 6L6GCs. Those are pretty common uh, current ratings. On a 1-ohm resistor, uh, current voltage are the same, so 50 milliamps times 50 millivolts will give you 0 0.0025 watts. So a 0.5 watt resistor would be enough. You're quite a bit below that. So again, I think um, that idea of almost using those 1 ohm resistors as a fuse is interesting. I will continue to use them. Um, the ones that I've got here, I've got a pack of them. Well, I also continued reading that thread, and there was a recommendation about using maybe a half watt or a 1 watt resistor but then bridging a diode as well. The diode will help ensure that the resistor doesn't get too hot and explode. And if it gets hot and like burns up, that you know, obviously having something burning inside of your tube amp is not a good idea. Um, so the diode will help protect the resistor and also kind of make sure that the mains fuse would blow to protect the amp as it's designed to do. So just kind of some interesting feedback there from these threads. Hope you guys, if you're building amps, this is helpful to you. If anything else, you just got to hear my train wreck for about five or 10 minutes. Um, but interesting stuff here about these 1 watt, one ohm resistors, certainly worth looking into. Uh, and if you are building a tube amp, I would recommend them. Put them in. I think these half watts are going to be good. Really, the only big spec you want to make sure of is make sure that they're 1% tolerance. You really want to make sure you have accurate tolerance there. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you again soon. Thanks. Bye.